will begin. Well, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to One Church this morning, where East, West, and Central congregations come together. We're here together all morning, everyone in the service, and it's great to see you all. My name's Ian. I'm one of the congregation, and uh, it's lovely to see you this morning. Welcome if you're here for the first time. Is anybody here for the first time? Any visitors? Yes, there's one. I can see one. There's a lady visiting. Welcome. Lovely to see you. Anybody else? Perhaps a round of applause for that lady. Welcome. <laughs> really lovely to see you. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that's good. Oh, we might get you up the front later. You sound... No, no, no. You sound like you're up for it. Matt's, Matt's waving. No, no, no. Don't do that. That's not a good idea. Um, let me give you the notices to start with. Most of our notices are actually on our newsletter email. Uh, um, and if you haven't uh, got access to that email or that information, it normally comes out on a Thursday, Wednesday or a Thursday. Um, there's a Get Connected card uh, that you can collect from the, the uh, table at the back. And uh, if you can fill in that form, we'll make sure that you have that information uh, as soon as possible. Uh, there is one particular notice I just want to remind you about. The persecuted church, I think there's a prayer meeting for the persecuted church. It's at 7 p.m. tomorrow night in our prayer room, which is just across the way there in the building across from uh, the main church. Uh, this is a, a family service today. Uh, if you have young children, there are baskets at the back that you can collect with instructions and uh, things for the younger children to play with during the course of the uh, service for them. And um, there's a theme for uh, the children to use there. Also around the corner, what I call the creative corner, um, round, just round here, Linda will um, be there. And there are things to do for those uh, who would like to do that during the course uh, of the service. And that's during the course of the worship, yeah, because Linda's doing lots of other things. <laughs> um, welcome to Pipe Cleaning Sunday. <laughs> You'll learn all about that in due course, so I don't want to steal Linda's thunder on that. Now, um, I'm saying welcome, welcome. You know, sometimes there's a, there's a God incident, not a coincidence, but I call them a God incidence where something happens. I've had this little song going through my head all, all week. Um, it's a very old chorus sort of song, and it's, it's got the word welcome in it. We welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you, come fill this place. Um, I don't even know the rest, how the rest of the song goes. I was just about in tune, by the way. I thought I was okay. Um, I don't know how the rest of the song goes. I've not, I've not sung that song at all for years and years and years. And this week, I was in the loft. And I opened up an old book. It's always not easy going to the loft. But we're going through some old books. And I picked up this book. And this fell out of the side of the book. It's the words to the song. I thought, hey, there's something going on here. And it says, we're all together to call upon your name. There's nothing we like better than to sing and to give you praise. Lord, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Come fill this place. You know, and I thought, hey, that's what I just need to encourage folks with at the start of this service. And um, I then thought, well, Gotta be spiritual and sort of, you know, let's give it a script. Let's find some scripture. 
And I think we've got Matthew uh, 10. Matthew 10, verse 40. He who receives me... Ah, that's the wrong... We wanted... Uh, I wanted the other version. I'll read out from my version. Sorry. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. Anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent to me. Now, the Greek word for welcome used in verse 40 is this. Hoping it's going to come up now. How are we doing? Is it coming up? Dakomai? Yes, yeah, sorry. Sorry, we... It's all double Dutch. Yes, it is. It's called dakomai, to be receptive to somebody. To be receptive to somebody. So, I think we should all get to our feet. Um, and we're just going to welcome... Well, I think let's just welcome what. Just turn to the person next to you. Just welcome them. Just welcome them. Shake. Just, just in case you've not seen them, just say hi. Just, just say welcome to this place. Welcome. Now let's welcome the Lord. Let's say, say after me, Lord, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Lord, we welcome you. Come fill this place. Come fill this place. Lord, we say we want to be receptive to you this morning. Yes, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we welcome you. Amen. Amen.
Father God, we just thank you that your name is power and there is power in the name of Jesus because of what he did on the cross. We just thank you that there is, name of, uh, there is power in the name of Jesus because he died, because there is freedom for sin, but that death has been defeated. We just thank you. We just proclaim the name of Jesus now over this place because in the name of Jesus, there is power to transform and to heal. Yeah, Jesus.
says in your word that you speak to us, no matter our age. So, Father God, we just want to wait. We want to hear from you in the way that a child wants to hear their parents' voice. We want to hear you speak to us, whether that be telling us just how much you love us, whether that's reminding us of one of your promises or who you are. We're going to wait because we want to hear from you. So, Holy Spirit, we just pray, come. Speak to us whether we are young, whether we are old. But come and speak. We want to hear your voice this morning. So, Holy Spirit, just come. in the sanctuary and as we uh, as we worshipped we looked around and arms were raised in the sanctuary yeah. there is a hunger in this pra- place for the presence of God this morning so let's raise our arms raise our hands in the sanctuary and we cry out to our Lord and we say holy 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 you are almighty Let's just stay in this place for a while. God knows our hunger. He knows how we come this morning. Praise you, Jesus. We lift our hands to you. Praise you, Jesus. We are hungry for your presence. Your majesty, your power, your holiness. We wait here for you. Yeah. Yeah. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Yeah, we lift our praise to you. Yeah, we join with those heavenly angels praising your name. Take us into heavenly places this morning. May our worship glorify your name. May it honor your name this morning. Through all the different activities and your word and our song and our listening, all we want to do is glorify you for who you are this morning, Father God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your son. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We invite you into our hearts this morning. We invite you into our minds. And we say, speak to us. We are listening. We we'll praise and honor to you. In the powerful name of Jesus, that name that we were singing, in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, please. I'm going to sit down today. morning. <laughs> I'm Linda, part of the team here, and uh, I need a bit of a crowd. I'm feeling a bit lonely <laughs> sitting here. Aww. Yeah, I know. I need a little bit of a crowd. This, uh, just look at this amazing mat. Isn't it great? 
we were worshipping and, and creating this mat. Isn't it good? There's a bit of a clue there of what story we're going to have. But we'll put that mat over there for a minute. But I am feeling a little bit lonely. So if I could have a crowd, it doesn't matter how old you are, if you could uh, come and join me, that would be really nice. Thank you. doesn't matter how old you are. Because, you know, this story, Jesus is the main part of this story. And everywhere Jesus went, there were crowds. This isn't a crowd. This isn't crowdy enough, is it? No, I'm sorry, but we need more of a crowd. We need more of a crowd. Because, oh, look at this house. Thank you, Miles. That's wonderful. I still see a few spaces. Thank you, Logan and uh, Amber. Wonderful. I need a crowd. Because in this story, they were crowding everywhere. The crowd still isn't quite big enough because they were crowding at the doors you couldn't even get in the doors. There was people everywhere. Yeah, I know we've got space up, but that's okay. That's okay. We can spread out a bit, can't we? That's it. Thank you, Maya. Did you know it's Moyen's birthday today? Woo! <laughs> isn't that wonderful? And that you're singing and worshipping on your birthday. Isn't that amazing? It's lovely. We're loving it. Right, this story comes from the Bible. So when we say story, sometimes we think, oh, it's a pretend story or perhaps a a Disney story or a fairy story. But this story is actually true. This is a true story. Something that happened, it is, isn't it, Miles, a long, long time ago. About over 2,000, when Jesus was here, that's right, over 2,000 years ago. This story happened, and we know it's true because it's in this book. And this book is called the the Bible, the Holy Bible. And we know everything in this book is true. And everything in this book is really powerful. Well, this story comes a little way over halfway. It's in the first part of when Jesus was here on the earth. This story comes from Mark. You'll find it in another Luke as well, I think. But we're looking, if you've got your Bibles and you'd like to follow, we're looking at Mark 2. Now, I Googled this. Okay, and this is about the ninth miracle that Jesus did. Does anybody know what a miracle is? Yeah. It's like a thing that someone does and it can't be explained. That's right. A thing that somebody does that can't be explained. Well, it sort of could be explained a little bit because only God can do miracles, can't it? But we can't explain it because God did it. We're like, whoa, how did that happen? Yeah, so this is about the ninth miracle. Jesus had just healed somebody with a disease, leprosy, on on his arms um, and on his body. And um, he was trying to sort of have a little bit of time on his own. But Jesus didn't do very well at that because everywhere Jesus went, people wanted to follow him. Even if he sneaked away, people would find him because they were so, like, they wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. And they wanted to see some more miracles. They wanted to, whoa, how did that happen? It says here, Jesus could no longer enter the town openly, so he stayed outside in lonely places. That sounds a bit sad, doesn't it, really? Jesus is staying in a lonely place. But yet, people still came to him from everywhere. So after a few days, Jesus went to Capernaum. I think I've got a map. You can see my map of Capernaum. You see that little red dot? Yeah, there it is. It's by the Sea of Galilee. And it said that Jesus came home to Capernaum. Now, Capernaum was the place where Jesus met some very special friends. Do you remember Peter and Andrew and John and James? They were his special friends. Well, they were fishermen, and this is where they lived, in the fisherman's town of Capernaum. And he also met Matthew there, the tax collector. Mm. So a lot happened in Capernaum. There was a synagogue there as well, and Jesus went there to teach and pray and worship God. But Jesus was in his house, in a house, and it was absolutely packed. There were people everywhere. It actually says that not even outside the door there was space. People were attracted to Jesus. They wanted to hear what he had to say. 
and they wanted to see what Jesus was going to do. Can you imagine a house where everybody's all squeezed in and they're all shuffling and squashed? Like, get out of the way. I want to see. Get out of the way. I want to see. Can you sit down a bit? Because I can't see. I'm going to stand up here. They were really full in this house. Well, there were some friends. In fact, four friends. And they had a friend that they wanted to take to see Jesus. And here he is. <laughs> there he is. But the thing is, we don't know his name. The Bible doesn't tell us his name, but who does know his name? God knows his name. That's right. We don't know his name, but God knew his name. But this was the fact that he had four special friends. And this man, but the only problem was this man couldn't walk. His legs didn't work. So he probably sat up a lot and laid down a lot, but he couldn't walk a lot. Well, the four special friends had heard about Jesus and that Jesus was doing some miracles, some things that you can't explain, but were happening. So they thought, you know, we need to take some action for our friend. We need to take him to see Jesus because we've heard that Jesus heals people. Oh, I wonder what this friend thought that was lying down. How are they going to get me to Jesus, he must have thought. Well, the friends came up with a really good plan. They said, we'll put you on a mat. A mat. So they put him on a mat. Thought, well, how am I going to get from here to where Jesus is in that busy house? We'll carry you. I'm sure his friends will carry me, carry you. So can you imagine lying on a mat with four friends, one on each corner, being carried through the streets of Capernaum? Do you think it was a little bit, whoa? <laughs> That's it. Going up the streets, going up the hills, going down again, going round the corners. Oh, I wonder what he felt like. And perhaps then they could hear the noise coming from the house where Jesus was. And they walked down the streets and they turned around the corner and... <gasps> oh, no, the house is full. We can't get in. How are we going to take our very special friend to see Jesus? What are we going to do? <gasps> and how... <laughs> what are we going to do? This man probably looked at his friends and thought, oh no, you've tried so hard, but it's not going to happen. Well, the friends didn't give up, did they, Miles? No, the friends didn't give up. Because houses in Capernaum and around, they didn't have pointy roofs like we have. They had flat roofs with steps going up the side. And Miles, you've made one, haven't you? Would you like to show everybody? Would you like to stand up and show everybody your house? Look at that. Isn't that great? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. So the friends started to take their friend on a mat up some steps. <laughs> Here they go. Do you think he was holding on really, really tight? Yeah. Just like, hold on to me because I don't want to fall off this mat. And they went up and they went up and they went up and they went up and they went to the top of the house. Now, most houses have roofs on them, don't they? Yeah. So now they were standing on the roof with the man on the mat. Do we know what they did next? Yeah. They did, because the roofs were made of mud and straw. So they started to dig and dig and pull away the mud and the straw on the roof. Now, if I owned that house, I don't think I'd be very happy with somebody on my roof taking the roof apart. And maybe underneath, there was things dropping on their heads. Yeah. What is that? What is that? And gradually, I think, people started to look up. What is going on? There's somebody making a hole in the roof. And the roof had, the, sorry, the hole had to be quite big because this was a man. It wasn't a little person, so that was quite a big hole, wasn't it? I think he'd have to fix, the owner would have to fix it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think somebody would have to help him fix it afterwards, wouldn't they? Well, I think the men sized up the mat. 
sized up the man, and they got him to ready, got him ready. They gradually manoeuvred him over the hole. What would you be thinking now if you were the man on the mat being manoeuvred over a hole in the roof? Okay, and perhaps they tied a rope on each corner, and gradually this man on the mat was being lowered through a hole. What do you think that felt like? Hmm. <laughs> Hopefully, they all did it quite evenly, and the man was lowered, and he got lowered. And I think the man was looking at his friends, thinking, please don't drop me. <laughs> and he was getting like, what's going on? Is something going to happen? Will Jesus make me better? Will he not make me better? What will people think? What am I going to do? And How good was that? Straight in front of Jesus. And I think the man looked at Jesus. And Jesus looked at the man. And the man looked at his friends. And his friends looked at Jesus. <laughs> and the room was quiet. You could hear a pin drop. What was going to happen next? Well, this is what Jesus said. Son, your sins are forgiven. Would you expect him to say that? Uh, he, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. Well, in the room, let me tell you, over that side, I think we'll say, there were some religious leaders. <laughs> okay, there were some religious leaders over there, and they were grumbling and moaning and criticizing because they didn't like what Jesus was getting up to and how he was showing everybody the love and the power of God and speaking the truth. So they wanted to get him. They didn't want, they wanted to stop him. So they were moaning and groaning, and they actually said, huh, who does he think he is? Only God can forgive sin. But Jesus said this to them straight away. He knew what was on their hearts, and he says, why are you thinking these things, religious people? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive on, to, sorry, the authority on earth to forgive sins. So everybody looked again at Jesus, and everybody looked at the man. And then Jesus said, this is what he said. Are you ready? This is what he said in front of everybody. He said, get up. Take up your mat and walk. And then he did. Did he? Oh. Did he? It says the man Are you ready? jumped up. Whoa! Can you imagine what that must have been like? One minute there, next minute Jesus spoke, and there, whoa! He got up. It said he jumped up, he picked up his mat, and I think he sort of swaggered out of the room, through the crowd that had to get out of the way this time because he needed to go through the door. And he walked through the door and off he went. And everybody in that room must have gone, oh, can you all do that? Oh. And this is what they said. We have never seen anything like that before. Wow, doesn't amazing things happen when God, when Jesus is in the house? Wonderful. Matt. I follow that. <laughs> God is good, isn't he? <laughs> right. Look at this, Matt. There. You can stay here, crowd. You don't have to go. <laughs> We've got more to do. Right, I need to find the space. Can you just shuffle back a little bit? <laughs> Not enough room, is there? <laughs> Hello. So I've got a question, right? Where do you think 
Where do you think? Not like where geographically, like, uh, I don't know, in the loo or in bed at night or so. But where do you think? What is the place, the focus of your thinking? It's here, isn't it? In our minds, yeah? That's where we think. And it's really important what happens in our minds. We talked a little bit about it last week, and next week we're going to talk a little bit more about it, some of us, because it says in the Bible, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it kind of really does matter what's going on in our minds. But something I noticed in this passage, and I've read this passage I don't know how many times, but reading in this week, thinking about it today, maybe I've just got really caught up in thinking about if that was my house, how would I feel? Or maybe I'm trying to unpack what Jesus was saying, this relationship between forgiveness and how the man was healed, because that's quite complicated to get your head around. But then I was reading it this week, and I saw this phrase that I've never noticed before. He said, Why do you think this way in your hearts? Why do you think this way in your hearts? I'd never noticed that before. What does it mean to think in our hearts? I've just said we think in our minds. Is there a difference between thinking in our minds and thinking in our hearts? Somebody come. I've got my red pen. Toby, while you're here, can you draw a heart for me on the board, on my whiteboard? that my wheelie whiteboard, I'm going to let you use, okay? Don't break it. Draw a heart for me. There. That's all right. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's what I wanted. That's what I want. That's good. So Toby's drawn what, if I asked every single person in this room apart from Maybe James or some of the other medics in the room. They might draw a picture with ventricles and all that sort of thing. Um, But that is what we would draw, correct, most people? But, you know, when the Bible talks about the heart, it's not really talking about this thing in our chests that's pumping blood around our bodies, When the Bible talks about our heart, let me read this to you. It's about much more than that. It's the heart in the Bible is the place where the emotions and the desires begin. And it's that which drives the will of the person towards action. So it's about what shapes our emotions, our attitudes, our ambitions, and ultimately our actions. That's why in the Bible it talks a lot about God transforming our hearts changing our hearts because it shapes what we do. What I want to do just for a moment is look at two groups of people in this passage and look at how they were kind of thinking from their hearts and how that impacted their actions. So let's just have a look at it. What was going on in the hearts of those were the the the, the the passage I read, the version I read was the religious law keepers. We call them the Pharisees. Now, what were they doing? They were really questioning Jesus, weren't they? They wanted to close him down and they wanted to shut him up. I don't think they were bothered about the chap on the mat. They were more bothered about what Jesus was doing because they wanted to protect their position and their public image because Jesus was saying, actually, there's a little bit more than what what you're suggesting. They were saying they were wrong. So basically, they didn't like it very much. And so what was happening in their hearts was shaping their reactions, their actions in this moment. So I want to say there were two things that were going on in their hearts that were shaping their actions. One, they didn't believe in Jesus. They did not believe. They had something called unbelief in their hearts. So they were coming to Jesus with unbelief. They didn't believe who Jesus was and what he was saying. But they were also frightened 
because Jesus was threatening their position. They used to try and make people scared to do what they thought God wanted. It's called religion. Okay, and that's how they tracked. And they were frightened that Jesus was just undoing all that. He was saying there's a whole different way, God's way. So they had unbelief. They didn't believe who Jesus was. And they had fear. And this is what they were thinking in their hearts. They're coming to Jesus with unbelief and fear. Do you see that? What about the friends? What did they have going on in their hearts? What were they thinking in their hearts? Well, what they were doing is they were believing. It's like the opposite. They'd heard about these 11 miracles, no doubt. You don't hear of, these things don't happen in towns, don't they, without people chatting about it. And so they'd heard in their heads, they believed. But then, it wasn't just what had come into their heads, their belief. It had traveled to their hearts. They had faith. What happened over there can happen to our friend. So the Pharisees and the religious people, they had unbelief and fear. The friends, they had belief and faith. And what a difference it made to their connection with Jesus. Just think about how that motivated them. Think about it. Don't need a bit of space, guys. So this is what happens when you have belief and faith. Right, I need four volunteers. <laughs> We just spent all that money on the roof getting it repaired so it doesn't leak for the first time in 30 years. All right, guys, carry me on this mat. Round there. There's a bit of flat roof there, just like in Jesus' time. Make a hole in the roof and drop me down. Okay, we're going to light. We're going to put that down for a moment. Do you see my point? Their belief and their faith really, really motivated them. As they thought about this in their hearts, their actions were impacted. And because and, and, they believed what they'd heard about Jesus and it traveled to their hearts and, it, and it, this faith welled up in them. Isn't that exciting? So the difference between these two groups and what they thought in their hearts is massive. One, well, let, let, let's, let's do it this way, right? Um, where's my little box? There it is. I've got some magnets here. Right, hang on a sec. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. Okay, right. You guys over there, do you want to be Pharisees or do you want to be like the friends? <laughs> okay, right. You, Cassie, you can hold that, all right? And you can hold that, okay? So, stand up. Cassie, stand up. Right. Let's just think about that. As we, do you want to stand up for me, lovely? Right, just need to make sure the right way around. Right, okay, right. <laughs> okay, oh no, it's all right, you sit down. Right, I need you to hold the magnet up. Okay, so how we think in our hearts 
impacts how we come to Jesus, yeah? So, um, what's your name? Karis. Karis, right. So Karis is, she's, her heart is full of belief and faith. Okay? Sorry. <laughs> Cassie. Sorry. So, so Cassie's coming with a bit of um, unbelief and fear. Let's just see what happens as these two come together. We need to try and keep them. See, they won't connect. They won't connect. What we think in our hearts impacts how we connect with Jesus. So turn it around. Let's, let's think about this, okay? So you come with your belief and your faith. What about if Cassie comes with that same belief and faith? Let's, actually, let's think, about, let's think about who Jesus is and about his love for Sorry, I've forgotten your name already. Karis. Karis, great name, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so what we have is this coming together of faith and belief and who Jesus is and what he's done and, uh, upon the cross. When these two come together, let's bring them together now, see what happens. Boom! There's connection. So how we come really does is affected by what we're thinking in our hearts. Does that make sense? So if we have belief and faith, there's connection. If we have unbelief and fear, there's connections, a challenge. Okay? I wouldn't say there's rejection, but when we come with unbelief and fear, it's easy to reject who Jesus is and what he's done. Yeah? Thank you, guys. Look, I love the guys in this story because they come with that sense of belief and they come with faith. Now, I want to say something that's really important because I can look around this room and I know many of you and I know your stories and you've come with that belief and you've come with that faith and I have to say you still keep coming with that belief in that faith and God has not moved the way that you had expected or anticipated. The connection hasn't been what you had hoped for, longed for, prayed for. And I do not know why. And I wish I could say to you that the reason is this or that or the other. And I can't. And do you know what? We won't know until we get to heaven and we see him face to face and we can ask as much as we want. But this I do know. And I think this is what this passage points towards, is that we need to keep coming with that faith, with that belief and, and, and faith. And we need to be consistently challenging unbelief and fear in our lives. And the more we come, I believe, with belief and faith, the more that we will encounter his presence. It won't always work out maybe the way we hope or the way we long for. But we will encounter him if we come with that belief and that faith. Okay? And in some respects, it's, it's not our place to ask why. We just need to keep coming and keep coming. Yeah? And even when we're disappointed, do you know what? We've got to keep coming. And we've got to keep coming. Because the alternative is, we let fear and unbelief get in the way. And that creates a lack of connection. All right? So I want to just pray for us all in this because this is stuff that we want to get in place really early. You guys, start understanding that I accept and embrace belief and faith and I don't want unbelief and I don't want fear in my life. Okay? Can I pray for you? So, Father, thank you that Jesus came, he lived, he died, he rose again, and by his spirit touches every part of our lives. And, Lord, we want to be people who are really receptive of that and open to that. And we say, Lord, would you 
come and meet with us. So we want to be people of belief, not unbelief. We want to be people of faith, not fear. So we pray, help us now, Lord. And we offer our lives to you like that magnet. And we know that you're the magnet on the other side, Lord. Our magnet is a magnet of faith and belief. And you're there ready to connect. So come and connect with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hannah. Don't go, crowd. I need you. Come back. You can't go back yet. <laughs> okay, so the belief and faith of that, uh, that man's friends meant that that man met Jesus. And what did that man do when he'd met Jesus? And, the ma- and Jesus said to him, stand up and walk. What did you think he did? Do you think he went like this? How do you think he reacted? Or do you think he probably went, Woohoo! I can walk. I haven't been having to walk for how many years? And now I can walk. I can stamp my feet and I can jump up and down and I can spin all the way around. Can you do that? Everybody stand up. See if you can jump up and down and stamp your feet. And can you spin right around? I'm just going to move this mat so we don't trip over it. Because I think you can. Because I think that a lot of you have met Jesus. In fact, I know you've met Jesus. In fact, we met Jesus this morning. So I think that we can jump up and down. Can everybody jump up and down? Can you stamp your feet? Can you spin right round? Can you lift your praises to this Jesus who heals and gives us the belief and faith that we've got in our hearts? Okay, anything else? When it's good, when it's bad, when it's like... What can you do? Karis, what can we do when it's like this or like this? What can we do? We can be happy. Do you remember? Be happy. Do you be happy. Yeah, be happy. <laughs> That's right. We, can, we had a little practice earlier. We can be happy. Okay, so just follow along. If you, if you really don't want to stamp your feet and whatever, you really don't have to. <laughs> if you would like more space, we've got loads of space down here. If you really want to spin around and clap, it doesn't matter how old we are or how young we are. We did this at some um, pancake praise party. And uh, we actually, the freedom that we had, it was all clear. And we were just dancing. We even did the conga of praise around the church. It was wonderful. You missed a treat. Okay, are we ready? Yes. So we're going to join in all together. Right. Okay, you ready? Gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud. Jump up and down, gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna death in the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. I will run this race and I will never stop. Follow Jesus till the day I drop. just got a word that he'd like to share that's come out of um, what's being shared today. Um, 
kind of follows on from what, what's just been said, actually. And I think there's a, there's a couple here. It may be two friends. It may be a husband and wife. I don't know. But I believe you've been at odds about something for a long time. And you've been struggling with it. And it was that image that Matt was sharing with the magnets. And it, 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 it hit me that God said, it's not one of you's right and one of you is wrong. It may be you both need to look at things differently. Now, when, what Matt did with the magnets was he turned one of them 180 degrees so that they would match. It might be that one of you needs to turn 90 degrees and the other one also turn 90 degrees. And suddenly you're drawn together, not pushed apart. As I said, I don't know who it's for, whether it's a couple or anything else, but there's been something that's been growing and growing that's pushing you and pushing you apart. And I think God wants to change that and bring you solidly back together again. Thank you. I'm going to come to you, Tony, because you wanted to give a bit of testimony earlier, didn't you? I'm going to come to you to save you the just nice and briefly, if you can. I was eight years old. And I couldn't even walk, well, five steps, and I would fall down. And I was a man that came through the roof when I was eight years old. And that's why I believe in Jesus, because Jesus healed me from... I couldn't walk at that time, but I can now, so... Isn't that amazing? so important that we hear these stories because they just that remember belief and faith don't they just rise up within us as we hear these stories so linda's going to lead us in our, our next bit and uh, we're going to start bringing some people to jesus we're going to start lowering them through the roof okay so on your chair i know some of you already been fiddling <laughs> i can see the fiddlers you should have a big pipe cleaner and a little pipe cleaner. You know, those uh, friends, they were moved to action. There was a movement, there was a move to action for their friend that they loved so much, and they brought him to Jesus. So we're going to make a little person. And this represents the person that you would like to bring. <laughs> Martin. <laughs> that you would like to bring to Jesus. <laughs> okay. So we can, I'll show you how you do it. It's going to be a bit like a Blue Peter moment in a moment. Okay. But uh, just, just think for a minute, who is it? It could be somebody that you know. It could be somebody that represents a group of people in the world at the moment. You know, our hearts are breaking for people around the world. So it could represent somebody around the world. It could represent somebody in your family or a friend or somebody that God has put on your heart. But through the faith and belief of those people, there was an action. And our actions can be in different ways, but our actions this morning is going to be our prayer for that person. Okay, so you need to take the long pipe cleaner first, okay? You can make your own person, but if you're stuck, just a quick long pipe cleaner, and then twist it in half and make like a circle on the top. So I've got a straw here because I was trying. You're not going to see that. So turn it in half. Take it in half, and then twist it, and make like a circle on the top. Okay, and then twisty, twisty, twisty. So you've got a circle and a twist. Okay. And as you're doing this, ask. Ask the Holy Spirit to put that person on your heart. Who is this going to represent? Okay, and then when you've done that, you get the smaller bit and you sort of twist it just under the circle. So the circle's going to be the head and this is going to be the arms. So you twist it around. Okay. And then you can put the arms up and the feet up and the, be creative then. <laughs> All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a time of worship. So 
if Hannah would like to And as we worship and as you feel ready, you come down. You take an action of walking from your seat to bring that person to Jesus and lay him on this, this mat or by this mat. So, Father God, we thank you for the faith and belief that you put in those four special friends for that man. And we thank you for the faith and belief that you've put in our hearts, for the people that you've laid on our hearts this morning. So as we physically stand and take an action and bring that person down to this mat, we just pray, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. And increase our faith and belief. Increase our faith and belief. And may we see your life transforming ways, your heart transforming ways in the lives and people that we bring down now to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. In the powerful name of Jesus. So when you feel ready, come down, lay your little person, and pray for them with that connection of faith and belief in Jesus. Let's worship together. your little person I'll come round and collect it for you and I'll put it on the mat for you so if you don't want to that's absolutely fine I can do it for you
That's what we pray over this mat <laughs> with all of these people and all of these people that are represented here. We say that you are the way maker, the promise keeper, and the miracle worker. Yeah. Rose has just come to share, and they had the same passage at Intercessors on Thursday. And the outcome of that prayer was sometimes you are the only person that can bring that person to Jesus. And you have been those people that have brought these people to Jesus this morning. So yes, yeah, so we say again, thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayers. And we thank you that you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker and you really are the promise keeper. Yeah. So I just pray, Holy Spirit, Keep these people on our hearts. Let us pray, our prayers continue for all of these people that are represented here. We ask in your name. Okay. There's a little phrase in this passage that says, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Uh, I don't think it would be right if we didn't pray for those of you who are sick. And in need, whether that be sick in, in, your, in your physical body or maybe uh, troubled in your mind. Rob touched on relationships. You know, it, the healing can touch so many different areas of our lives. So I want to just, in this atmosphere, as we celebrate God's healing, to pray for those who need healing in this place today. So we're just going to wait on the Lord for a moment. I love that, that where Ian kicked us off today about this, just being receptive. And we've celebrated the power of, of belief and faith. And how when we bring our belief and faith to the, to the reality of who Jesus is, there's a connection. And that connection can look like all sorts of things, but there are moments when we know it leads to a, a, a healing or it's a setting on a pathway into healing. And that's what we heard about with Reuben and we Tony testified to this morning. You know, these guys aren't making this up. This is true. This has happened. So we want to just pray for healing in this place today. So I'm just going to ask you, if you need healing in your, in your, in your body, or maybe if you need healing in your, in your mind, or your, there's relational healing, if you're happy to do that, I just want you to raise your hand now, and I would just like the person near to you, if you're happy with this, just to lay a hand on a shoulder, can you do that? And then Tony's going to come and pray. So if you've got your hand up, has everyone got a hand? I want, I want, can somebody go in? Stephen, can you 
Can, can we just stand with Stephen for Ned? Is that all right? Yeah. Is that all right? Can someone just go over? Stephen's got his hand up there, but if you could stand with Stephen for Ned, that would be really good. So has everyone who's got their hand up got someone with a hand on them? No. no? Jen? Somebody just lay a hand on Jen. Just come round. Right, over here as well. Can we just have... Guys, can you go on over? Are we there? Have we got, everyone got a hand? And Tresilia? Come, Holy Spirit. And we're standing with you for Richard. Tony's going to pray. And then Rachel's going to come and read. In a moment, don't worry. Stand and receive, that's fine. So we just, where our hearts are ready to receive. Father, thank you. You're the great healer. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that everybody that got a hand on them will be receiving healing in the name of Jesus. And I pray that, that the enemy will be bound where there's relationships not working. I pray, God, that you would remind relationships, Lord. Lord, you said, what man, what has God put together, let no man apart. So I pray that marriage will be healed in the name of Jesus. And I pray any physical healing would die. <laughs> Mental sickness will die. Father, I just pray for your presence and your healing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Stay with it. Rachel's going to come and read from Philippians 4 for us. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, hallelujah, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, and I can testify to that, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that peace of Christ upon you now, upon your physical bodies, upon your minds, hearts, relationships. And I thank you that each and every one can carry that peace out of this place today, can take it, can be a conduit of it in the places that you put them and place them in the days to come, in their homes, in their, in their neighborhoods, in their workplaces, in their, in their places where they go to do their hobbies and sports or whatever, Lord. We just pray, let them be a conduit of peace. Let them shine that into those places. Praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to wrap up with a...
As it's your birthday, <laughs> you get to, with me, help me, but we're going to say a blessing over everybody as they go from this place. Are you happy for that? I have not asked Mo Yin. I'm just doing this, all right? But we're going to pronounce a really special blessing. Are you ready to be blessed yeah. as you go from this place today? Right. So Mo Yin, together with me, okay? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. 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 This is a big bite. Well done. Well, you can go home now. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Don't forget, praying for the persecuted church tomorrow night. See you all next week.